The Bible says we shouldn't give up meeting with one another to encourage one another, to strengthen one another. You might come to the church as a testimony that strengthens your faith. You might listen to the choir sing and it's that song that strengthens you. Or you might listen to the sermon and it's the, it's the, it's the sermon that strengthens you or just a word from a friend. And it might be a revival that strengthens your faith. Anytime I want to do, um, sorry for being emotional, I want to do this, I always pray to God and it's, it, they, they say be careful what you pray for or what you wish for. I always pray to God to use me in different ways and anytime I pray concerning this, he always ministers to me to use something I just went through. And to be honest, it's always very humbling. It's, it's a learning experience as much as I stand here. And, and at times it's scary too that I really don't want to do it. So, and like I was saying, the Bible says, don't give up encouraging one another. It might be, we all remember that after the, um, thank you. <laughs> Some weeks back after the revival, it was, if you were here for the three days or if you listened online, wherever you were, you could feel the, feel the presence of God, excuse me. You felt His presence, you felt revived spiritually, your faith was strengthened for me and I'm sure for many people out there. You know, you just felt on cloud nine and you just felt the presence of God that He was right there next to you. You know, we all left, I left, you know, expecting, hoping, I know it was, it was the time of change and all that. Not to say I'm putting taking my faith away from the almighty God and putting in a revival or whatever. But just, you know, you feel recharged, like we say, spiritually. My faith was recharged. I went home expecting and waiting and wishing. And of course, I know that the Lord will do it in his time. And two weeks exactly after that revival, I started, I started to feel overwhelmed. Moderately overwhelmed, you know. So speaking to my husband, you know, I just said, we we're talking about what we're going through as a family and things. He says speak positive, but things were getting worse. You know, and, and then I said to him, I'm like, how come after the revival? I, I said to him, I said I'm over. I, to be honest, I've been feeling overwhelmed lately. And um, I'm like, why am I feeling like this after the revival? X, Y, Z. And he started to preach to me. And I said, I know that. I know what the Bible says, but I still feel that way. And he said something else, and I said, yes, I've preached it during women and evangelism. I've preached those words, but guess what? I'm still still feeling that way. Two days later, I, I sit down, but I'm on the laptop, I'm still feeling that way. He, he's standing by the door, he starts to preach. And before I knew what, the tears start to run down my eyes. And I said to him, I'm like, can you just please shut the door, lock it? I don't want the kids to come, come in and see me crying. I said, I needed to cry to feel better. And I started to cry. I was sitting down. And from crying, I found myself weeping. I did not say a word, but I was crying. I was physically shaking. And then I cried and I stopped crying. I stopped crying and then I went on my knees. I said, God, you know, forgive me for not trusting in you, for letting the devil make me feel overwhelmed for this particular period. Because I was crying, I was doubting God, I was just feeling helpless, I was feeling like he wasn't there. And I said, God, give me the strength to carry on, whatever it is that I'm expecting as an individual, as a family, and X, Y, Z, I'm like, God, give me the strength. And the third thing I said, I'm like, God, thank you for the things you have done for me. And I started to list those things, list and thank him, and thank him, and thank him. I didn't finish thanking him, I just had to get up. I said, God, thank you for the times I did not call upon you and you answered. I said, God, thank you for the times even when I thought it, you answered. I said, God, thank you for when I prayed for one week, you answered. I said, God, thank you for the times I told my husband, oh my God, I just prayed about this yesterday and he answered. I said, God, thank you for the times I just prayed about it this morning and you've answered. And what am I saying? How do you respond? When the devil attacks the faith you have in God. When I stood up, I'm like, okay, enough of the computer work. It's time to get ready for church. I put on the Bluetooth speakers, start to listen to gospel music. And to be honest, I felt light and I felt lifted up. And I started to sing. I was dancing. It was loud music. 
And then I said to myself, I'm like, why was I overwhelmed for minutes back? Why was I crying? I'm like, why did I fall for the enemy's attack? And then this song came to me to me by um Hill Song. Um the title of the song is came to my rescue, but before Almighty God, the word the, the first lines of the chorus of that song came to me, said, You I I call it says, I called you. I called you and you answered. You came to my rescue and I want to be where you are. So why all of a sudden I'm crying ten minutes ago and the next minute my spirit is lifted? You know, I'm like God and I'm, I'm like, oh God, why did I fall for the plan of the enemy to make me doubt you or feel like oh things are not answering? What does um, Psalm 139, 138.3 says? In the day when I cried out to you, you answered. You made me bold with strength in my soul. And that's what he did to me. And when I told the, my husband to shut the door, I did, I, I, know, I knew all the preaching. I know what the Bible says about standing firm and all that, but I didn't want to hear it. And I stood there, I preached it, but I'm like, why is it weighing on me? And he shut the door and I cried. What am I saying? At times you just need to shut that door. What is that door? It is noise from the enemy. And the enemy comes in different ways. It might be your own thoughts that, oh God, when and why? It might be people around you, oh, how come you're still unemployed? Do you know what the person is doing? Do you know why that person is still unemployed? It might be your siblings, it might be your spouse, it might be people around you, it might be your own expectation, it might be your own human understanding, trying to figure it out with your own wisdom. So how do you respond when the devil attacks that faith you have in God of the things unchanged, of the prayers unanswered, of the situations unchanged? How do you respond? Do you shut down? Is that when you say, oh, this church, they don't know what they're doing? Is that when you say, oh, this prophet is going, or, and prophets don't give um, the correct messages because you've gotten a message and it's taking forever to be answered? Did God tell you when he was going to answer it? When you lose faith, or you become overwhelmed like me, that you make it overwhelm me, and, and that for for that five minutes or ten minutes, I was, I didn't believe, I didn't have faith. It, uh, um, when we listen to, um, there's so many stories in the Bible that talks of Jesus. They said he left the crowd and he went to a quiet place to pray. When I was crying, I wasn't praying to God, but I knew He knew why I was crying. And I cried my heart out, and when I went to him in prayer, he was with me. When I listened to that Christian song, he ministered to me. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and what happened when he came out of fasting? The devil came and tempted him. And what did the Bible say? The Lord sent his angels to strengthen him. So it's not something you can do on your own. You, can, you cannot pretend to a human being. I'm strong, I feel strong. You cannot pretend to God. You just have to open your heart to Him. Even before you do, He knows it. But you still need to come to Him, open your heart, and lay all your burdens before Him. And put yourself in, you know, study the Word of God. It is listening to whatever it is. It is music, the Bible. You also need that one-on-one -on -one time with God. You know, I just hold on. I'm, I'm giving, we've all been there. There are days you know, it's easy to hold on. There are days you don't even realize, oh, God, I've fallen. You know, so just hold on to your faith and shut out. Don't listen to what people say, what society expects you to do at certain times. Lay all your burdens on the Lord and he'll be with you. Amen. And lastly, um, and in the midst of it, when you're going through things, just rejoice. And when I went to my knees and prayed, prayed, when I stood up, I felt like an ungrateful child. I'm like, after all what God has done for me, because I'm still expecting something, I'm complaining, I'm crying, oh God, when and how? How about all the things I tell you, I kept thanking him and thanking and thanking and thanking and thanking. So let us not forget to give glory to God for all the things he has done. It's easy to say, easier said than done. And that's why I, I became overwhelmed and found myself in that situation of crying. But we can't do it on our own. It's only something you can do by the grace of God when you ask him to give you that strength. 
from my brethren in the Lord, let us hold firm, let us encourage one another. It's not until you know so whatever someone is going through, it's not until you know the particular details before you can pray for somebody. Let us encourage one another in faith and stand firm, and the Lord will continue to strengthen us. Amen. What does Philippians, I'm going to just read with Philippians 4, 7, and 6, which says, that, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind Amen. through Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord. 